Okay, so we'll see how to solve this problem. A 30 meter long lossless transmission line with characteristic impedance, which is R0, is given as 50 ohms. Length of the transmission line is given as 30 meters. And load impedance, ZL, is given as 60 plus J40. Operating wavelength, which is lambda, given as 90 meters. We have to find the reflection coefficient, which is K. SWR, standing wave ratio, and input impedance on Smith chart. First, we have to find normalized load impedance, which is ZL bar is equal to ZL divided by R0, which is equal to 60 plus J40 divided by 50 ohms. So, this would be 1.2 plus J 0.8. Now we have to plot this on the Smith chart. Before that, we have to find, represent the length of transmission line in terms of lambda because one lambda is given us 90 meters. Therefore, 30 meters will be represented in lambda as 30 divided by 90, which is equal to 0.33 lambda. So the length of the transmission line is given as 0.33 lambda. We'll see how to plot this on a Smith chart and also how to solve this. So, this is our Smith chart. We have to plot 1.2 plus J.8. Point 1.2 point is right here. I'm just highlighting this circle for your reference. Otherwise, it is not needed to highlight it all the time. And point 0.8 should be marked right here. So, this circle, the intersection of these two points would be right here. Okay. So, this point is via Rosetta bar, which is equal to 1.2 plus J.8. To find the VSWR, we have to draw the VSWR circle first. The center being 1 and the radius is where we have marked our load which is ZL bar. So I have drawn a circle. This circle intersects the horizontal line at a particular point and this point is supposed to be the VSWR point. As you can see the value is slightly before 2.1. right? So this point is a VSWR point and the value is 2.07. Now the next thing you have to find out the reflection coefficient magnitude as well as the angle of reflection coefficient. So to find that we are going to draw a line joining the center with the load and we are going to extend it towards outside. To find the angle it crosses the point right here so this is how you this is where you have to mark the VSW I mean a reflection coefficient angle so this value I'm just marking the point as I so the angle of K right here is going to be 55.9 because this is 52 54 and then it is just before 56 so the angle is 55.9 and to find out the magnitude of K, you have to do a little bit of work. You have to find out where the reflection coefficient axis is given. I'll just zoom out for a little bit. Okay. So as you can see, the reflection coefficient is given in this axis right here. Right. This is reflection coefficient. So you have to mark your reflection coefficient right here. To mark your reflection coefficient, you have to just extend the line from the circle. I'll just zoom out for a little bit. Okay. 
you have to draw a line perpendicular line joining the center point at this side okay towards which here it should be exactly perpendicular so please don't make any mistakes here so if you find out the point right here the magnitude of uh, k you can find here as 0.35 okay it is where the perpendicular line intersects this axis that is right here the point m so point 3 point 3 4 32 point 3 4 and just after point 3 4 therefore it is denoted as point 3 5 so this is how we are going to plot the magnitude as well as the angle of reflection coefficient and the vswr the next thing would be we have to find the input impedance let's say how to plot the how to find the input impedance so to find input impedance as you can see this is your source okay and you have your transmission line which uh, for which the characteristic impedance is 50 ohms and you have load connected at the other end so the input impedance is uh, you can find the input impedance right here okay so you have to travel from the load towards the source or towards the generator okay towards the generator and the length of the line as we have measured it is 0.33 lambda so we have to mark a point where the load is occurring in this case it is e already we have marked it. so to find out uh, the wavelength where your load is being marked okay there are two directions which is specified on this my chart as you can see on the left side please follow the marker wavelength towards generator and the direction is given as clockwise direction so to move from load towards the generator you have to move towards clockwise direction on your my chart and uh, wavelength towards load you have to follow anti clockwise now to find out the load impedance we have to move clockwise so you can follow the reading right here here the reading is 0 0.04 0 0.05 to 0.06 and it increases okay so where we have marked load the point i mean the wavelength is 0.172 this is where right so here it is 0.172 lambda so from 0.172 lambda we have to move another 0.33 distance okay 0.33 lambda distance towards clockwise so clockwise when we add 0.172 with 0.35 0.33 sorry 0.72 0.33 we will get 0.502 lambda right okay point 502 lambda so i'm marking it right here point 502 right so that's the value point 502 so from this position we have to go towards a uh, point 50 so i'm just tracking the value right here um here it is 0.26 0.27 and the last value i can see it on the right hand side okay i'll just zoom it and zoom in okay right so the last value is 0.49 and uh, this point would be 0.5 okay this point is where 0.5 occurs but we need 0.509 as you can see right point 
0.502. So, 0 0.002 we have to find, right? So, point 0 0.002 is the point where you will get um, this point, <coughs> right? This is point 0 0.002. Now you have to draw a line joining the center and crossing towards point P. Okay. Sorry. Point P. And this line intersects your circle at a specific point. Okay. For time being, I'll just uh, delete this point. Now it intersects your circle at this point, right? Okay. So we have to track this point now. To track this point, to track this point, you have to find what is the resistance value. So follow the resistance circle. The resistance circle value is just before 0.5, right? So the value would be 0.48, okay? And then you have to follow the reactance circle. Just follow the marker carefully. The reactance value is 0 0.1. Okay. 0 0.1. So, the input impedance value for this given problem is 0 0.48 plus J 0 0.1. The normalized impedance value. We will go to the work board. So from this mid chart, we have marked the normalized input impedance as 0.48 plus J 0.1. So the input impedance value can be evaluated directly from multiplying the input impedance with the normalized impedance. And that is given us 0.48 into 50, which is 24 plus J 5. Okay, that is the input impedance. So, this is how we have to find out the input impedance on this mid chart. Thank you.